What is up, everybody? Solomon here. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic Monday. First and foremost, I wanted to wish you all a very happy holidays. I hope that you guys had a fantastic Christmas. If you celebrated Christmas, uh, whatever ha holiday you happen to have been celebrating. Uh, if you see any scam ads on this video, please do not participate in those. Uh, I also wanted to give a big shout out to the XRP community. Uh, thank you for all of the support doing quite well. Uh, okay, I wanted to get into this. Uh, this just came out probably about a half hour, 35 minutes ago. This is from Coinbase. Uh, given the SEC's recent action against Ripple, all XRP books have been moved to limit only, and Coinbase plans to fully suspend trading in XRP on Tuesday, January 19th, 2021 at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Afterwards, users will continue to retain access to their XRP funds. So trading will be eliminated, but your funds will still show up uh, on Coinbase. You can still transfer uh, on or off of Coinbase into a wallet, et cetera, the way that this looks. Um, getting into this even more so here, uh, this is the actual uh, press release. This is from their CLO, their chief, uh, chief legal officer. Um, trading moved to limit only starting December 28th. So that is today. Uh, 2 30 p.m pacific time so that's actually already occurred uh fully suspended on tuesday january 19th 2021 uh trading will not affect customers access to xrp wallets which will remain available for deposit and withdrawal functionality after the trading suspension further customers will remain eligible for the previously announced spark airdrop subject to approval in certain jurisdictions and we will continue to support xrp on coinbase custody and coinbase wallet so for those of you that use Coinbase, um, that is obviously new news. Uh, again, they are suspending trading due to the, um, uh, the pending legal action from the SEC against Ripple. Uh, that is, you know, stating that uh, the SEC believes that XRP is a security uh, all the way back from, what, 2013 to now. So it's taken them seven years to take legal action. Um, we know that Ripple announcements obviously have not affected the price of XRP. It's crazy to see what the SEC announcement actually did. So they're actually, you know, supposed to be protecting investors, and uh, they've done the opposite. Anyways, uh, U.S. crypto exchange OKCoin uh, doing the same thing, uh, suspending XRP trading and deposits. Uh, I do not use OKCoin at all. So, you know, but for those of you that do, this news came out, um, I believe, today as well. So you can take a look into that. Uh, now, this came out also, this is from SBI Japan, uh, regarding the proceedings against Ripple by the Securities and Exchange Commission. This is December 28th, 2020, uh, to Ripple uh, Labs Incorporated, uh, which is our business partner and develops and provides next generation payments uh, infrastructure utilizing blockchain technology. A lawsuit has been filed by the Securities and Exchange Commission. However, in this column, a uh, U.S. SEC that sued Ripple, uh, a fellow, uh, okay, this is just one, somebody from Nomura Research Institute stating, XRP is widely traded by crypto asset exchange companies in Japan. Uh, but under Japanese law, XRP is a cryptocurrency asset under the funds settlement law and is not applicable to securities under the Financial Instruments and Exchange Act. So XRP in Japan is not applicable um, being deemed a security. Uh, okay. Under the Financial Instruments and Exchange Act, which, which requires the submission of a securities notification form to the Financial Services Agency for offerings of a sale, it can be said that it, it has been done. This point will not be affected by the proceedings between the SEC and Ripple. As mentioned in the note, XRP will continue to trade on cryptocurrency exchanges registered as cryptocurrency exchange companies uh, as cryptocurrency assets rather than securities in Japan. So XRP will continue to trade uh, by exchange, uh, cryptocurrency exchanges in Japan as a crypto asset, not as a security. We do not think that there will be any problems, period. Although the group invests in Ripple shares, it does not invest directly in XRP and is limited to stock for customer transactions at SBI VC Trade, a crypto asset exchange company within the group. There is almost no adverse effect on our consolidated business results due to the fall in price of XRP. Almost no. In addition, the remittance solution utilizing the distributed ledger technology that Ripple provides globally, globally to financial institutions can significantly reduce the costs of international remittance regardless of whether or not XRP is used. We've already known that. 
Therefore, Ripple is also considering relocating its head office outside of the United States, considering that major, fi major financial institutions such as Europe and Asia are also considering the use of this solution. Interesting. Uh, the group will continue to actively support the activities of Ripple to expand its use in Japan and overseas. All right, moving forward, I did want to um, congratulate people that and maybe, you know, took a look into Polka Starter. Uh, I need to still do a little bit more of a deep dive on Patreon on this one. Um, but nothing come, you know, there's there's positives and negatives too. anytime that you present assets that are lower market cap. Uh, so I, I talked about Polka Starter last week, right before the break, I still need to obviously do the, the deep dive on Patreon. Essentially, in a nutshell, uh, you know, imagine crowdfunding slash Kickstarter, um, but, you know, via the Polkadot ecosystem. Uh, but then you've got negatives, too. So this is Pond. This is Marlin. This has actually been in development for a couple of years. This just got released, this coin. I presented this one, too, on Patreon. It's down 20%. I think I presented it at, like, $0.05. Cents. And uh, the kicker for me looking into this just was the, the fact that one of the, uh, the founders... Uh, of Zilliqa basically is very much so involved in this, uh, as well as some MIT, MIT um, partners, et cetera, not partners, but um, individuals that are very much so tied into um, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, uh, as well as some of the Ethereum ecosystem uh, original researchers. So I dove into that one. This is very, very new, very high risk, obviously. Uh, and then a huge shout out to anybody that, uh, took note of the Alliance block thing that I posted on uh, December 6th. I know I continue to talk about this. I think this is a good project for, for, a, for an extreme low cap. Um, you know, they're tied in with Quant, they're tied in with Link. When I presented on this, it was like six cents on December 6th. I went all the way up to 40 cents, so you can do the math on that. Um, but yeah, nothing is all 100% definitive in this space, like especially these low caps. Uh, and I know that it's probably enticing right now with XRP, and I'm gonna get into that in a minute here, to say, well, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna sell everything at a loss uh, and go into something else. And that is completely your prerogative if you choose to do that. I have no issue, and I'm not gonna sit here and tell you to do one thing or another with, uh, with your cryptocurrency, your digital assets, your investments, because those are your personal decisions. Everybody has different um, reasons they got into digital assets. Everybody has different amounts that they hold. Um, some more than others, and everybody certainly has different life circumstances uh, and their own mindset, and they need to you know, be able to make whatever decision that they feel is the best decision that they can personally make. Um, but I did want to go ahead and say congratulations to those that actually did get into Alliance Block. Uh, if you weren't aware, Treasury will start sending out stimulus checks by the end of the week. Uh, these are the, I think, the $600 checks. Um, I will be looking into digital assets. I'm going to kind of play hot potato with these. Um, but... That being said, given the economy and the effect that this past year that we've had, I can certainly understand people, you know, needing this money. I just don't know what six hundred dollars. Uh, say you have a family of five, um, what three grand is going to possibly do um, to try to have some sort of a a rebound effect for these people that have haven't had jobs for months. Uh, so, but you know, that's just a heads up for you guys. The Treasury is going to start sending out stimulus checks by the end of this week. Uh, we have heard also that the $600 stimulus in the U.S. Uh, per person, and obviously th there's limits, um, you know, thresholds that you need to fall under to be able to receive that, um, may be boosted up to the $2,000 stimulus. So we will see where that goes as well. I've gotten direct messaged uh, about this a couple of times on Twitter because I've done previous videos talking about uh, how people were calling for lower prices and when I would begin to get concerned uh, as far as XRP is concerned. Uh, the... Concerning thing to me was always this uh, this base trend line here, which this is the worst chart to go on actually because it's on Bitstamp. Hang on. So if you go on to like Poloniex here, which is like I believe the oldest chart for XRP, right? Um, we're like all the way back in 2014. Uh, we touched base, actually broke below this trend line. Interestingly enough. Um, previous to the last bull cycle like this is the the actual trend line now at the base because now we have new data uh, as far as what's happened recently um so this was like the previous breakout this line that you see coming down here uh and we actually when we when we went down we touched base on this lower trend line here um actually 
down below where the breakout initially occurred in 2014. Then you can see in 2000 and we touched base in the bear market of 2017. I apologize. Now we've got like right now, we've touched base once, twice, basically, right about almost there. I uh, had our initial breakout in August, uh, confirmed down, and then we, we had our breakout all the way up to close to like 88 cents with the wick, right? Uh, now we were like right at that trend line again, uh, which, which is, that's like, this is like the, the trend line that I've been watching is like breaking below this one right here, which essentially is like right about like 18, 19 cents. Uh, depending on which exchange, which chart you look at, we could have potentially already broken that. I'm looking at the daily right now. Obviously, anytime you start zooming out further, uh, so there's a lot of people that day trade and look at the four hour chart. If you look at the four hour chart, uh, certainly relevant for what you're trying to accomplish with day trading. The day chart has a little bit more power to it because you're zooming out and looking at a little bit of a bigger picture. A uh, weekly chart has more power to it. You're zooming out, you're looking at a little bit of a bigger picture. Um, and then obviously, the monthly chart. Um, is is much more powerful uh, than the weekly, than the daily, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see where we're at right now. Right now, you know, we're right about there. Uh, we haven't broken below this. Um, you know, it is what it is right now. So I, that's that's when I start getting really concerned. If I start seeing prices like 17, 18, 19 cents, 20 cents, and we're riding against this bottom trend line, uh, I certainly will be paying more attention. All right. Real quick before I get into this last thing here, China orders Alibaba founder Jack Ma to break up fintech empire. So this is the Chinese government essentially saying that Alibaba is um, overstepping their bounds as far as uh, what the, I think that ha this has very much so to do with what they're trying to do with a, a blockchain and um, the fintech ecosystem, but saying that they're essentially monopolizing um, certain things here and they need to step back. Um, authorities in Beijing who had on Christmas Eve ordered an investigation into allegations of monopolistic practices by Ma's online retail giant have now ordered his financial technology company, Ant Group, to scale back its operations. Uh, now, we do know Ant Group is very much so tied in with Standard Chartered. We know they're tied in with uh, Flutterwave. We know they're tied in um, via the, you know, the, what is it, the, the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. Uh, to ripple through standard chartered, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I will be curious to see where this goes. This is not a small announcement by any means. Um, you've got Ant Financial. Uh, I think Ant, it's just Ant now. Ant Financial is just called Ant now. Um, Alipay, Alibaba, all this stuff. This is, this is huge. Um, so we will see where this goes. Uh, last but not least, I saw this today. This is Stuart XRP at XRP underscore Stuart. This kind of ties in with what I got into a little bit earlier. Uh, stating, don't be mad at me. I still believe in XRP in the long run. I have sold all of my XRP at 29 cents for ADA uh, Cardano uh, at 17 cents. I cannot deal with the stress of XRP um, potentially uh, being deemed a security or just the news uh, and what's going to be coming about over the next couple months. Until it all gets sorted out, uh, I will be out. Been accumulating XRP since 2018 with $0 in profits. I wish you all the best. Um, wish you all success. Um, invested more than I can afford to lose. With the majority of my life savings in XRP, I did not diversify as I have always believed in only investing in the best. I will sell XRP no less than $15 or I will ride it down to $0 is what he posted on December 23rd. Um, he sold at a loss with an average cost of 40 cents. He needs ADA um, to go to 20, 23 cents, 23.7 cents. Uh, and that's just, you know, it's a lot of stress. And you know, if you're if you're not aware, if you're just watching this on YouTube, maybe if you're newer in this um, community or, you know, whatever, uh, or just new to crypto in general. Um, Stewart's been around for quite some time, uh, definitely one of the more, if not one of the most morally sound people that I've seen in this space, uh, along with just literally like a handful of others. Um, Bank XRP, uh, Darren, uh, Kevin Cage is, is a very moral individual. I've, I've spoken to him multiple times. Stuart and I have had conversations on Twitter, um, just in DMs and stuff like that. Um, this is why I want to just, just say, you know, every single one of us has to make our own decisions in this space. Like I had a little bit of a nervous breakdown like last week. I don't think it was directly tied in with XRP, but you know, it certainly was on my mind over the past week and a half. So um, these things become very stressful, especially when you start investing money that you cannot afford to lose, um, especially when you don't diversify, because I'm not going to sit there and knock somebody for not diversifying. Uh, we've all done the research. Stewart certainly has done the research into Ripple, into XRP, etc. Um, 
but I, my personal opinion in what I try to preach is diversification. Um, I believe that there is going to be multiple winners and it, to me, it's just a hedge against risk a little bit. That being said, uh, we've also seen, you know, when you have a consolidated position, uh, that can generate wealth, not just, you know, make you a, a nice little payday uh, that generates wealth. So I'm certainly not mad at Stewart for uh, making the move that he felt was was correct for him to try to maybe regain some of uh, some of his capital and what he had invested into this space. Um, but I'm certainly not going to knock the people that are holding either. I, I've said this before. I personally, uh, even during the live stream, I freaked out whenever the XRP security thing came out. I actually sold like a little bit uh, and then was laying up in bed the same night and told my wife I had to go do something. And I went back and rebought it. And I, it was stupid now, like looking back, you know, because I could have easily doubled um doubled my my amount of xrp that i held but for me personally i never invested more than i was willing to lose xrp was like my, is my number one holding it still is um i'd have to check to see what the dollar amount is if that's still true but it, it was as of before this you know complete breakdown in price um my number one holding my personal plan was it, it, and still is is just to is just to hold through and to try to dollar cost average if we go lower um, I, I haven't invested more than I was willing to afford to lose. Uh, I I knew getting into this that every single thing that I put into this space could go to, you know, not zero, but almost zero. So, uh, but, you know, this is what we're all dealing with right now. We're all dealing with it in very much so different ways. So anybody that's telling you you're making the wrong decision for doing something that you personally feel comfortable doing um, is wrong because they're not you. Uh, we all make our own decisions in, in this space. There are certainly people out there. I try to present news and I try to um, present research and deep dives and find cool stuff whenever I can, but I'm not you, um, you know, and I'm certainly not going to sit here and tell you what to do with your hard earned money. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your investments. We've all got to make our own decisions in this space. And, you know, Stuart certainly made his, I've made mine. We're all, you know, every single one of us has made one, um, made our decision as far as what we're going to do with XRP, I'm sure over the past week. So, um, it is what it is. I'm gonna pay attention and see where this goes. Um, I will continue buying. I, I'll certainly be buying XRP if we go a little bit lower. Again, I am concerned if we break that that bottom bottom trend line though, and uh, we will pay attention. Um, remember, and this isn't just for XRP. The powers of be certainly want you out of this space before everything l legitimately goes mainstream and before regulatory clarity comes for the entire ecosystem, the entire space. And I'm sure it's going to be an, uh, an evolving type of regulation. It's going to have to be because um, innovation doesn't stop. Uh, these digital assets we see right now from an innovation standpoint certainly won't be the last. They certainly be, won't, will not be the most innovative. Um, they certainly will not be uh, the only ones that have questions as far as what regulations um, mean for, the, for them as they come about. So it is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. I'm staying very much so um, involved in this space. I took a little bit of a break here. Um, plan on getting back on Patreon, trying to find some more uh, Alliance Block type coins here, uh, hopefully. Um, but for every Alliance Block one that is found, there is certainly a Marlin one. And then this isn't even saying this is a bad project. I, I buy and I hold these things. Um, and then when it gets to a certain level, I try to cash out my initial investment and just hold the rest. Um, but you know, anybody sitting here saying anything's going to go to the moon, it's going to happen overnight, blah, blah, blah. They know as much as you and I know. So just got to pay attention, uh, do our due diligence and stay on top of things. And don't let anybody tell you what you personally decide on doing is wrong because they have no idea who you are really, uh, what you're dealing with. They have no idea about your personal situation. We've all got to, you know, kind of make our own make our own judgments in this space and try to pay attention to uh, legitimate news as much as we can. So I hope you guys had a fantastic holiday again. And uh, if there is news tomorrow, I will certainly be presenting it. Okay. I will talk to you later.